much having yeah. you. Thanks for coming to Dallas. I mean, it's fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I know you've been going a lot of different places with this. I think you went to my friend Paul McAvoy's Fright Fest. And you guys premiered there. Yes, we did. Yeah, so, we and I did. know it received very, very well there. And it's being received very well on the film festival circuit. It's got to be very gratifying, I would imagine. It is. It is. Because we're like, we're a zombie movie set at Christmas. We made it for a very, very small budget in Scotland. It was a group of like aspirational, lovely young filmmakers making it. We had no expectations for it. So that it's found an audience and has been like, welcomed with open arms by the genre watching community is uh, just like so beyond gratifying and super fulfilling actually. Was it a little weird at first when you found out like okay this is going to be a zombie comedy musical like was there any Except aspect Christmas. Right, except during Christmas. Uh, was there any aspect of that that made you kind of think no that this can't work there's no way it's going to work. I don't know why it, it never really crossed my mind I mean it crossed my friends' minds, because I remember telling my friends and then being like, it's on the musical set at Christmas, Ellie, you don't have to do it if you don't <laughs> want to. But I, I just really wanted to. I loved Anna. I loved that she was a different kind of teenage character that I'd seen before. Yes, she fits into some of the cliches that we often see in leading teenage girl characters, but she grows out and beyond that so quickly. And John McPhail and Alan McDonald, who uh, Alan wrote it, and... and our producers, they were so up for making her different, and I was so excited to get to play with that. I love that she's a really strong character, but that at the same time, flawed. You know, yeah, like she's got and flaws, vulnerable. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. unsure, and in denial. Yeah. Um, that was, yeah. So many layers to play with there, as yes. an actress. You know, I imagine that was really gratifying. She's a delicious yeah. onion. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, when you play a character like that, uh, do you, is, does that allow you to kind of bring some of your own ideas to the role as well. Yeah, and I think that was, uh, so I auditioned for the for the role before they had John McPhail attached, mm. and I got a call basically the day after my audition saying that I was the producer's favorite. And then I got a call a couple months later when they had attached John, uh, saying that John really wanted to do chemistry reads. So I went in and it was basically start, like starting the audition process again. And I think the reason John cast me was uh, in one of my auditions with him, he gave me a piece of direction that I um, I, I wasn't sure about, and I said, why? Um, and, and he gave me his answer, and they did the scene, and, and he was excited to work with someone who was going to question, develop it with him, and he really taught me that, I'd had a director when I was about 15 who had, who had basically said to me that, you know, it's a hard thing being a director because everyone basically has to be a bit scared of you, and, and you know, you have to be this power figure, and, and, and it's, John McPhail just proved all of that wrong because it was just about a friendship, a, collabor a collaboration between two creatives. It was about building something together. Um, and, and actually when we got round to shooting that scene that I auditioned with, in, in, that I'd said why to, he was like, oh no, I, I liked how you were playing, but I just needed to see that you could. And, and, and we were able to have the conversation and play it both ways. But yeah, I loved that about working with John. I imagine part of the audition process had to be singing, like they had to yeah. hear how you sing and how well you sing. But when did you find out whether or not you were going to be able to sing well with all those other cast members? Because you guys play so well off of one another in the musical numbers. As in, when did I find out that we were going to be... Like, was, there, was, was there a moment early on? No, was there a moment early on when like you guys were singing together and you were like, wow, this is really clicking? This really works. Well, it's a, like, it's a funny question because we all recorded separately. Mm -hmm before the start of shooting, and I went off to shoot another movie after I'd recorded the music. Between recording the music and shooting Anna, I shot something else. So I didn't have a, a, an idea of, of, of what other people were doing, so it wasn't until I sent the songs a couple of days before starting shooting that I listened to them back and was excited to hear how our voices were gelling. But even, even whilst we were shooting, like, we became really close really quickly and all discovered that we all had mu musical backgrounds and enjoyed playing together. But it wasn't until the film was actually finished and I watched it back that I was like, we gel, we yeah. gel. Yeah, it works. But it, yeah. we had there were a couple of moments like that in the film where like, in Human Voice is this song about connectivity and, and these characters trying to reach each other from, from different places and, and the impact of our phones on how we function as a society and I love that song. Um, and it was one of the days on set where John McPhail came on and was like, 
I want a different mood on Saturday. I want you to be focused in the heart of this song. This has to be a really special moment and it's a darker moment and I just want you guys to meditate on that. And half of the song is shot in a different location with different characters. And I had no idea until I watched the movie that he'd given everyone the same piece of direction. So when you watch it, we are all in the same emotional place. And it was so, I was so kind of excited by John's directing skill to, to see that we were all unified in our emotion despite not being together and shooting on the same day. Yeah. Uh, I remember seeing an interview with you where you were talking about, uh, talking about playing a strong female character. And you were also mentioning the fact that like 50% of your crew was women. Yeah. Like you guys employed a lot of women on this. That's great. Isn't that wonderful that yeah. movies are like that nowadays? Yeah, it's wonderful. And it's still, we're still working on it because I, I'm st that you still see a lot of sets that aren't that way. But um, for our set, it was, uh, I know that Nason and Nick, our producers, just wanted to um, have the best people in the best positions. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about having a woman here because we need to tick a box. It was that Sarah Dean, our director of photography is an awesome director of photography and she's like super super elevated the film with the like the scale of her shots and and Emma Claire Britton was the best fight coordinator that we could have had and and, and she really built Hannah and I'm yeah Anna wouldn't be Anna without the women that were around me yeah I, I love the way that you play the character like I said as a tough girl but also with the vulnerability and I also love the fact that the film is able to kind of surprise us and give us moments that you don't necessarily see coming. Yeah. You know, like there's some really serious moments, there's some really dark moments that kind of make you take a pause and say, okay, there's there's more to this than just music and fun. And yeah. You know, I love that about it. So, so do I. Yeah. I imagine that's that's fun to play with when you get on set. Yeah, it is yeah. fun to play with, and and I mean it made it a more challenging shoot, but I'm glad for it. Mm. Um, because I think that's the thing that people have, people like you and I have connected with the film is they've gone in expecting it to be ridiculous and they come out and go, I'm thinking, I'm, I, I, I felt for them. I, I cried with them at points. Yeah. So you laugh with them because you love them and, and that's... We've all been the misunderstood high school kid. We've all been through that. We all yeah. have. So, yeah. I think there's something there. Um, I also wanted to ask you, I know that you probably get asked this a lot, especially now. Mm. Were you a zombie movie fan? Are you a zombie movie fan? I, what are some of your favorite zombie movies? I have become a genre fan, especially just because of how welcoming and wonderful the genre of watching audience have been with our movie. Right. Um, Horror fans are cool, aren't they? Like, so cool! Yeah. So cool! <laughs> but musical fans too, I yes. think of them quite similar. It's a similar passion they share. Yeah. Um, and I have become super into Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Love that movie. Love that movie. Um, Sigourney Weaver, I watched I watched Alien when, when, I, when I got the part because she was somebody I wanted to be influenced by. Um, I watched Get Out recently. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a horror yeah. film. Well, I mean, Amazing. to me, that's a, that's like a psychological thriller. But right. I know that it was Blumhouse and that, that it was named as a horror, but to me, it's so much more than that. And that's that's where horror becomes exciting for me is when you're watching what you think is one thing, but you're you're eating your cake, but you're actually eating broccoli. Right, right. Do you know what I mean? No, I get it. Yeah, that's a good enough. Let's see. <laughs> I know one of your first projects was Les Miserables. Uh, has singing always kind of been involved in your life? Uh, when, when did that kind of become a part of your life? Um, singing became, music was more a part of my life when I was young than, than acting. Acting happened very randomly for me. Um, and I didn't expect when I was spotted my, by my agent when I was 11 and got into acting that, that acting and music would become so entwined, but they just have and I relate to things through through music. It's 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 where like my basic emotional process starts and I always make a character playlist um, before I start working on something and and so actually it's not as much a surprise as, as it it has been to me. But I loved working on Anna, I loved working on Limers, I I hope to do more. Yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, what, last but not least, we got to wrap this up, but what do you want people to take away from this? Like, what is the number one message you want people to take away from this movie? I want people to think about the violent world we're leaving for our kids. I agree. Yeah. That's interesting. Interesting way to put it. All right, Anna the Apocalypse is playing in Dallas right now. We'll have more information down below where you can see it. The very lovely Ella Hunt, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for taking time to talk.